moet uh, één van de klappen als ze binnen. Eén keer klappen. Ja. Eén keer klappen als ze klappen. Ja. Morgen is nooit zeker. Welcome and we're lucky to have you, Vice from Haida Productions. First and foremost, how did you create your name and your brand? Um, the name is actually a nickname that my mom gave me. Uh, roughly translated, uh, it's, uh, it means rebel. Uh, I was always outside doing what I wasn't supposed to do. So she, um, that's how I got the nickname from her. Um, I took that as a nickname later because there is still that um, the philosophy of a rebel inside the brand that I would say I always try to do things that other people wouldn't do like like most people say think outside the box something like, like that. Yeah. And did your entourage always motivate you to do that or was there something that would push you back? Um, the right people always motivated me uh, to pursue it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the wrong people are not around anymore, so <laughs> only keep the people that motivate you around you. And was it always easy to make those decisions to choose for your art instead of just spending your time randomly? Um, good question, because that was not easy. Um, there were long periods of time in which I um, didn't choose for the arts, choose for comfort, uh, traveling, relationship, stuff like that, uh, and, and the art part got like pushed away, uh, sometimes for years. Um, but it always stays in the back of your head, so you always feel like there's this emptiness and sometimes something is missing and you want to pursue something. Um, so the feeling is always there, so I always picked it up. And every time I pick it up, I try to do it uh, 10 times better than last time I picked it up. Yeah. And how did you evolve um, in your personal life to get closer to that goal where you could do this more? Um, well, as you get older, I always think that uh, age between like right after puberty and like adolescence, let's say, between 20 and 30, it is a special time for everyone. Um, and I, I could see myself maturing in those, in those years. And there were some decisions I had to make, some hard decisions to uh, keep on the right path because it's easy to make the uh, comfortable decisions so have like um, there's a saying like uh, easy choices hard life hard choices easy life so I really believe in that philosophy that if you uh, grind and hustle right now that you'll have an easier life later um, yeah. did the um, people ever I complain about you investing time and work into yourself or was it always like they accepted it? In myself or in the company or what do you mean? Both, both. Um, I mean, having a relationship and trying to pursue this uh, was a bit hard sometimes because I did invest a lot of money in equipment uh, that I, if I think back of it, I could have invested it in the relationship as well. Um, but yeah, if it's the right person, you will always uh, get the support no matter how long you're gone and how man much money you keep investing in it. Uh, the right person will always uh, support you. And did you have ups and downs regarding your path? Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I dropped it for many years, had to pick it up again, and, and, and it's always been like ups and downs. Uh, I'm 30 now, uh, if, I, if I compare it like between when I was 20 and 30, uh, it, it went like this. So it was like a period, there's like, you have so many ideas, you want to do them all, uh, and you want to go for it, and then after some time you just fall back into comfort because you're like, 
Uh, I think a lot of pe uh, people nowadays, especially me as well, we are very impatient. Uh, we want results now uh, because we see online social media with people that are already here with the same that they're doing. And you're here, but you don't see the rest. You don't see, you only see the tip of the iceberg. You don't see all the uh, the hardship and the hustle they have to go through to get to that point. So it's easy to compare yourself and be like, if I'm not there, am I doing a good job? Uh, so there was a lot of that, a lot of comparison. Um, but now I don't uh, mind that. Like I don't compare anymore, I just uh, focus on myself. And if I can do better than what I did yesterday, then I know I'm on the good path. And how do you mix the business side and the art side? Is I think um, just having a, having a good schedule and, and keeping to that. Like if you say Saturday is dedicated to to shooting, then you're just gonna go Saturday and focus on the shooting, not focus on editing or focus on anything else and just follow your schedule uh, for me that's what works best um, and the business side there's always the, the part of like um, how to say um, like you, you get paid for it for, for, for the job you do but then it's difficult to, to put a price on it uh, and then you have other uh, circumstances in which you have to lower the price whatever uh, but the, the, the result always has to be the same you cannot lower the quality of your result for the money so I always found it like a bit special to to have those two mix even in art school when we had to get grades for something that is artistic uh, it was difficult for me to understand like today I feel like painting flowers and they're like no draw a house but it's not what it feels like so I would I can draw a house but it will not be the same and passionate result as a flower because that day I felt like that uh, and it's the same onwards after school with business is like you have to make so much money because you need to pay your bills but then you have to still keep it artistic and have, have a good result. So sometimes it's a bit difficult to combine the two. Uh, but yeah, just keeping to your schedule and not forgetting that end of the day you're an artist, not a businessman. Uh -oh. And what inspired you to go into your art form? Um, what inspired me to go into... Well, what I'm doing now, it inspired me because I like visuals. Uh, I used to draw, paint, sculpt, uh, so everything is like involving visuals. And um, I, want some, I wanted something that um, I needed to go out to nature and fun places and travel to do this thing. Um, and not be in a studio or like in a in a um, in a, um, a atelier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, close location to create the art. So that's how I uh, found uh, drone, drone uh, footages to uh, shoot with drones uh, because I really thought about the whole package. Uh, okay, I like making videos, but how do you make videos? You go to fun places, you meet fun people, uh, sometimes you need to travel. So all of that combined uh, is why I chose for making videos instead of painting, for example. And what was your first work that you did regarding drone footage? Professional? Um, the professional one, I think there was a, it was a short movie uh, for someone in Brussels, uh, or was it? No, the first one was like a promotional video for the parliament in Brussels, uh, Vlaams Parliament, and uh, that was actually very interesting because I didn't have a drone license and I didn't have. Um, a uh, permit to film in Brussels, but the guy called me, I knew this guy uh, through something else and he's like, you have a drone? I said, yeah, and he's like, can you film for us because we need like some drone footage? I said, okay, but where is it? And he's like, in Brussels. Yeah, but in Brussels, it's, uh, you need a permit. Uh, and he's like, we'll take responsibility, it doesn't matter, let's go. So we went, uh, we shot some pretty normal stuff in the city. And at the end of the day, we go to the parliament because it was a promotional video for the parliament. And he's like, 
can you fly a drone into inside the parliament? And I was like, this is the last thing I want to do because yeah, no license, no permit. But yeah, I was like, fuck it. And uh, we just, they had to call the military police uh, to open a window because they need to like unlock it, uh, everything like central. They opened the window and I had to fly my drone through the window and uh, there were two people speaking on the on the stand. I had to like fly in, circle them and then um, stop in front of them and then like pan out and all in one shot. So it was a lot of stress, uh, a lot of sweating because also like if you fly a drone inside a building, it might lose connection with the satellite and then it just crashes or it just flies off. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. So I just did it. <laughs> Whoa, that's epic. Uh, yeah. And did you already know that you were going to do it or did your vision involve? To do... Um, drone shooting and make your art in a certain way? Um... I did not have a clear image of what I wanted to do with it. Uh, like I said, I, want, I wanted to travel, I wanted to make videos. I wanted other people to hire me to make a, a video, so the creative part is not always on me. I can just shoot something and sell it. And um, I've been doing a lot of stuff, like the music video, the uh, short movie, the promotional, commercial uh, stuff. So it's always like evolving and evolving. I've uh, done some travel videos. So yeah, as long as it's like filming with a drone, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, just evolves. And um, how did it uh, go when you went internationally with your project? Um, internationally? In another country when you did your art form? Um, yeah, every country has a bit of um, uh, different laws for drones. Uh, like for example, now in Egypt, it's prohibited. If you if you just go to the airport with a drone, they will arrest you. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I don't know. The first time traveling to it was I think to Bulgaria, and I had a DIY drone. And if you put all the parts of a DIY drone in in a, a suitcase, in like this uh, metal suitcase, it looks like a bomb. Because <laughs> you have the LiPo batteries, you have a bunch of wires sticking out, you have a screen, you have... It just looks like a bomb. And I went to the airport with it, uh, I looked some stuff up and I saw that you can't have the batteries, you need a special pack for if it like catches fire. Sometimes they can catch fire. And you need a special pack and that's it. If you have that, all the rest is fine. But I was still like sweating. And uh, the guy <laughs> ran it through the scanner. And I was like, okay, I was just waiting for them to call me. They called me over and they're like, they were all looking and he called over two more people. So there were like three people. And they're like, one step back from the table. They're like, can you open the suitcase? <laughs> I'm like, relax, it's a, it's a drone, whatever. I tried to explain, but it's like they were not listening. They were just like looking and waiting. So I just open it and I like turn it to them. And they're like, okay, can you explain? <laughs> so I just explain everything and uh, it was funny. But um, I wouldn't go to any uh, like countries like Egypt or something. If they say it's like prohibited, you can get arrested. I wouldn't take the risk. Uh, so yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> The positive uh, experiences, like uh, your movie that's coming out on Netflix? Ah, that's... Um, but that's not with the drone. This one? That's not with the drone. What was it? Uh, that's just uh, acting. Oh! But that's not with the drone. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, that's not with the drone. That's not with the drone. <laughs>